So first of all, the story weavers. If you play all seven story weavers, the only synergy you get is bruiser. That's pretty lame. There are story weaver crowns and story weaver uh, plus ones in augments now. And I'm assuming that one of these units is going to be your carry. Zoe seems like a possibility. Sivers probably not that good. Aurelia is kind of good. Delicious gains attack speed, right? So maybe you could play like Story Weaver with Zoe carry. But that still involves you getting like more Arcanists and some other stuff. I think this trait will be really fun, but probably a little bit underpowered at the very beginning. I am a big fan of any summoning trait that comes out though, so whenever summoning traits go live, I'm a big propitiator of being early into making it work. The next fun one seems like porcelain. Porcelain units gain attack speed and armor reduction when they cast their ability, but the really crazy thing is Lissandra's ability. Lissandra's ability does 700 damage at 1 star with a 90 mana cap, and it stuns them for 3 seconds. It's pretty busted. And then if they die, you get a loot orb, which is basically just another free item. And then if they don't die, you do extra damage. So this, this unit... It's definitely going to be pretty strong. If you find Lissandra at any point, it's probably going to be pretty easy to tech her in. All of the five costs this set seem really overpowered, to be honest. I don't really know about Azir and Set, but Zyre Khan seems good. Wukong seems good. Wukong's ability is really cool. Irelia's ability is really cool. Quay gets to copy one of your units. Udyr has like multiple forms that do really cool stuff. Another fun one is probably going to be Reapers. Reapers don't share any synergies with each other, so it'll probably be like uh, set 9 or set 9.5 where you had like the, the Kiana carry. You'll probably play like maybe only two of these guys, and then you'll end up a uh, them to carry since it makes their abilities crit and they gain crit strike chance. Kha'Zix reroll I'm sure will be one of the reroll comps at some point in the game. I don't know how strong it'll be but a 40 mana ability that leaps to the lowest enemy so he can just potentially jump around the entire combat and win. Pretty quickly like that blue buff will be pretty good on him. Yone seems like a lot of fun. He dashes to the back line, does a little bit of damage, and then gains a ton of attack speed. So he'll just start wailing on people. I'm assuming Kindred's probably going to be the most likely person to uh, actually be the Reaper carry, though. 30 mana ability. You slap a blue buff on her. She gets 20 mana, so two auto attacks. You dash away. She's going to be... Oh, she has a faded bonus also, so more attack speed means more chances for her to proc her... Ability. She'll just dash around a ton. You'll probably play maybe like it'll be like a Kindred Yone duo carry, I'm assuming. And you would probably play like I mean, if you're re rolling these two, you re roll at seven, you get to play a lot more units. So maybe like one of these Dryads. What do we have here? Bruiser Dryad. Dryad Behemoth, Dryad Invoker. So maybe one of these guys. Uh, what about the Faded units? Faded would be any of these guys. So Duelist, no. Sniper, no. Behemoth, no. Arcanist, no. Umbral. Umbral synergizes with that guy, but that's not till later. Behemoth, however, there's like double behemoth action here. 
faded behemoth, faded behemoth. But then you're still not even playing three faded at that point, right? So you'd have to play one more guy. To get the bonus attack speed down somehow. Behemoth trait does armor and magic resist for your front line. And then bonuses whenever another behemoth dies. So if it's not faded, then what's like, that's super awkward, right? Dryads gain ability power and 100 health. Each death grants additional health. Huh. I mean, I guess there's a chance you play four behemoth or four dryads like this. And then you just tech in like whatever you can, umbral. Tech in Bruiser, you could tech in Warden. Maybe you don't play Young. Maybe you play. What are the. What's the. Reapers. Hello? Class, Reaper. I'm probably looking right at it. It's right under my nose, yeah. Heavenly, so you get rerolls, and then you get bonus crit chance on your units so you could play kindred kha'zix reroll right or ghostly if you wanted to tech in a cane ghostly gives healing and bonus damage to enemies based on the amount of ghosts that are out so maybe it's not kindred yon maybe it's kindred kha'zix or kindred cane heavenly the other heavenly units Origins, Heavenly. Behemoth, then you go Synergy here. Or Arcanist. Duelist. Altruist. Okay, so. I mean, Malphite. Synergy's here. Now you're 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 units. That's awkward because you're not actually going to play two canes, right? Or, I mean, you play, you're not going to play this guy, right? So what if you don't play this or this, and then you look for ghostly units? Ghostly units is a class, I'm guessing? Or is it an origin? Oh, it's an origin, ghostly. Sniper, bruiser. Okay, so here's ghostly bruiser. Now you're one, two, three, four, five, six units in. You don't have to reroll for Rek'Sai, you're just rerolling for Kindred and potentially Kane at level seven. And then you get one more, you get a Behemoth. Is there a Ghostly Behemoth? That would be crazy, right? Ghostly Sage, Ghostly Reaper, Ghostly Warden. Ghostly Behemoth? So that has a lot of synergies right there. Four Dryads, three out of two Ghostly, which is kind of awkward, but you get Behemoth, you get Bruiser, and you get Reaper. And technically, even though you don't get the four Ghostly cutoff, you could always go up one more level, put in more Ghostly. And having three Ghostly units does still impact the board more effectively, makes them take more damage. So that could be interesting. I'd love to see a Kindred carry comp work. You could always drop a Dryad also, but I'm assuming getting more AP and stacking up the Kindred health bar could be pretty strong. Because then you put like, what, you do like a blue buff, and then a healing item, and then you already crit, so you don't need a Jewel Gauntlet, which is insane. I think her ability does magic damage to two different enemies. So, like, in theory, you could always do, like, a Hodge, so you have more crit chance, or maybe a Nasher's Tooth, since you get the attack speed bonus list from that, you ult a lot more often. Maybe Giant Slayer. Plenty of cool items you could put on her, for sure. Oh, there's a clear board button? Okay. Little two cause reroll comps, always fun. The next one I think will be fun 
He's freaking Bard, dude. Where the frick did Bard go? What is his what is his class type? He's a faded unit, right? He gets the oh mythic. It's called mythic. So Bard's ability and trick shot, mythic trick shot, for the next six seconds, attacks instead for two meeps, each dealing bonus physical damage and bonus magic damage. Mythic gives us attack speed and ability power based on the amount of units in. And uh, trick shot means that your ability will hit an additional unit. So I could see Bard being a potential uh, like Ginsu's holder, right? So you would go like Ginsu's, Hextech, Gunblade, and maybe even just like a second Ginsu's or maybe a crit option. You get like plus one, but it definitely looks like this. Maybe even like a Giant Slayer since you get attack speed, attack damage, and ability power. Helps you get through the front line. And then who do you play in combination with Bard? definitely play one more trick shot not snipers one more trick shot if you're gonna reroll at level seven for the three cost bard then you're either gonna have probably don't want storyteller maybe it could be fortune what does ink shadow do Gain a tattoo, right? So maybe you play it. Maybe you play that. Because there's the new Ink Shadow items, right? Ink Shadow tattoos. And there's a, an attack speed one. Deal 35% bonus damage to targets below half health on takedown. Gain 40% attack speed for this many seconds. Does that count as an item? Okay, so maybe your, your plus one is... Tattoo of Fury, dude. Bonus damage, bonus attack speed. Bard carry. You play Ink Shadows, so you play Bard and Kaisa. Kaisa? Play Bard, Kaisa. You need two more Ink Shadows, right? And we're gonna go for, opt for the, the frontline ones more likely, not backline. Okay, so it's gotta be Aatrox. Shen. Now you're th now you're three. This guy three. This guy, and then mythic. Mythic guys, you got to get at least three mythics in to give Bard his bonus attack speed and stuff. Behemoth, behemoth, heavenly. Okay, so Tom Kench is a bruiser. That's good. Three, three, three. Wardens, mythic wardens. Wardens gain damage reduction for the first ten seconds of combat. Then they gain more damage reduction. That seems good. Invoker, Altruist. I mean, Nautilus is also... There you go. Okay, so... One, two, three, four, five, six. Two four costs in the comp, but when you're rerolling at level seven, getting two four costs isn't actually that completely impossible. And then I guess at this point, you're just looking to tech in some kind of ghostly unit. Maybe it's like... Shen or maybe Ghostly Behemoth. You're already playing Aatrox. You don't really want to play Ghostly Sniper. Oh, Ghostly Warden? Big. Damage reduction adds Ghostly to the comp. Kind of a satisfying frontline, and then Bard is your backline carry. Your tank items probably go on Nautilus and Tom. Ink Shadow, you get the... I don't know if you get like the choice of a tattoo, so maybe you'll have to tech Ink Shadow in early. And then once you get the, the early Ink Shadow, you can decide what direction you go. But I, I feel like you might get a choice of the tattoos, since in previous sets it did not work out very well, having to uh, randomly decide what you get. And then, you know, obviously there's going to be your, your uh, forecast level 8 roll down comps I'm sure like Lee Sin will be one of them Morgana could be one of them I'm not a huge fan of these level 8 roll down comps so I'm probably not going to talk about it too much I'm just going to talk about the uh, 
units that seem like they'll be fun to reroll. We've already got a two cost potential reroll and a three cost potential reroll, so we'll try those out once we get into the uh, PBE servers tomorrow or the next day. I'm not super sure who else I saw that could be really good though. Maybe you could do <clears throat> an Arcanist Lux reroll game with Porcelain. Fire two lasers. I mean, that's probably not that good. One cost reroll in Kha'Zix. What Wasn't there like a Sivir? Gain 80 attack speed and grant attack speed to Alice. So she's a support unit. She's not actually a carry unit. She could be good in place of that Kaisa for that Bard until you get later into the Bard comp. Oh yeah, Kog'Ma, dude. Kog'Ma seems like he could be a really fun unit. Kog'Ma has his ultimate from League of Legends, dealing magic damage to the lowest health enemy within range every two casts. You gain extra range. 30 mana, so a blue buff on him has him casting a ton. He'll probably need a Jeweled Gauntlet just because he cannot crit naturally. So it'll be like blue buff Jeweled Gauntlet. Maybe healing, maybe you want to do self-healing, you do something like that. Maybe you want to get more attack speed for more casts, you do something like that. Seems like a plus one option. You get stuck on the guy, you do that. But this might be his core items right here. And then you'll probably want to play Snipers and Mythics. Invokers every 3 seconds your unit skin mana. 4 invokers is 20 mana every 3 seconds, which would just technically let him cast once every 3 seconds on top of how much he's already casting, so... What about 4 mother trucking invokers, guys? He is a 3 unit, or a 3 trait unit, which means on average his ability is going to be slightly weaker. That's the way they balance out giving your units those extra traits. And unfortunately, Invokers does not seem that good. Lily is a Mythic Invoker, so, you know, Mythic Synergy is always good. But there's no, like, Tank Invoker that you can play. Unless you're playing Janna. In which case you play Dragon Lords, and Dragon Lords uh, shocks the board, dealing true damage to enemies and granting attack speed to allies. Probably not going to want to tech that in. Probably not your best bet. So an early game Kog'Maw board will probably be another Ink Shadow board maybe? Or maybe it could be a Faded board? Porcelain Snipers... I mean, if you're re-rolling re at 1, you're level 5, right? So what's your level 5 team? It's probably Kai'Sa or, or Caitlyn or this guy, right? If you get Caitlyn, you get Ghostly. If you play this girl, you get Ink Shadow. Ink Shadow has the, the frontline package, the desirable frontliners, right? You get these two guys. Boom, boom. Do you have to put the Ink Shadow tattoo on a unit? Which Ink Shadow items you get changes each game? So definitely you won't always get to play the Bard. But it seems like you can put it on whoever you want, right? So what, you play three Ink Shadows here, you have boom boom boom, four units, level five reroll, you're probably gonna wanna play Bruiser. Maybe you tech an Invoker early, Grants attack speed to Senna and her allies. But you're probably just going to want to play another Bruiser, right? And you're re-rolling here. Maybe you could tech in like a three-cost Bruiser class. Bruiser. Three-cost Bruiser. And he's a Mythic. There you go. He's a three-cost Bruiser and he's a Mythic. If you find, then you get the Lilia later on for the, the 
three mythic plus invoker tech. One, two, three, four, five, six. You get one more unit at the very end. So there's probably a ghostly warden, right? Ghostly. And allow he's a ghostly warden. So this seems like a pretty desirable frontline package. We've been putting Jackson Aatrox in a lot, a little bit of Shen. Once you get the three Myst Mythics online, Kog'Maw's getting that extra AP, that extra attack speed. Sen is giving him attack speed. Your Ink Shadow Tattoos. There's frontline stuff. There's Toxin that does extra damage. That's not necessarily great. So Kog'Maw's probably going to be looking to grab the attack speed one also, but maybe you could do the Tatsuki Toxin. Or you just take a frontline and just go buck wild with the frontline stuff, right? So we got Kog'Maw, we got Bard, we got Kindred. All potential reroll comps that seem like they could be a little bit of fun. Um, there's also Riven. I know Riven seemed like she had an ability that was playable. Well, well, frick. Well, frick, where's Riven? Riven is a story weaver, an altruist, and a bruiser. So actually, maybe Riven sucks. Two cost reroll in the story weaver. So what if you play five story weavers with Riven? Because then Kale gets her upgrades. And bruiser was the one synergy that you got to keep with story weavers, right? So, level 7 reroll. Bruiser. Does she want Arcanist? No, she does not really want Arcanist for the extra ability power. Garen. Sivir's extra attack speed could be good. It's self and adjacent allies, so you're never actually going to get the attack speed from Sivir, huh? Sage. What does Sage do? Sage, class, allies in the front two rows gain Omnivamp, allies in the back two rows gain ability power. Oh. So Sage is cool. But to play two Sages, what? Ghostly Sage, Dragonlord Sage, Story Weaver Sage, Great Heavenly Sage. I don't know, dude. Frick Riven. There's probably gonna be a cool Riven comp, but I'm not smart enough to figure that one out yet. Obviously, Zoe reroll though is definitely a thing, right? Zoe reroll. You play a couple of Arcanists. Maybe you play Story Weaver. She's Fortune also, so. Maybe you get to tech in fortune for a little bit. She seems like she'll be like a high, high skill capped uh, reroll comp because if you can tech in the fortune and then still also play her, that's really strong, right? Let's see. Arcanist has a two, four, six, and eight cutoff. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Arcanists in the game. get an Arcanist emblem from what's it called, you know? Arcanist's only synergy is Porcelain by default, but you're one off of Faded and Nico is a Heavenly unit. Heavenly unit, Mythic unit. And her Heavenly bonus is what? Hello? Heavenly bonus Nico, please. Origin, Heavenly Nico. Wait. 
I saw earlier that Kha'Zix's heavenly bonus was... Oh, here we go. Let's crit. So Nico's is HP for your team. Which means you get more HP the more... You get two stars, grant 50% more. Three stars, grant 90% more. Hmm. So you could play... 20 to allies, 40 to all arcanists. So story weaver, arcanist, reroll somehow. Story weavers is the bruisers. Nico. Arcanist, Nico's, two story weavers. Galio and you get Riven for two bruisers. There's your front line. Altruist. Uh, Altruist Heavenly, no. Altruist Story Weaver, no. Altruist. The only other Altruist is Soraka. Soraka's Heavenly, so there you go. Bonus. Heavenly, a little bit of healing action, a little bit of extra AP on her. One, two, three, four, five, six, plus Kale. So Kale would go like in between these two with the bonus AP. She's basically just a free, uh, what's it called, item. And then you're looking to play one more guy. Is there a, a frontline porcelain? Yeah, a Moo Moo, right? Porcelain. Uh, Warden. But you do get the damage reduction buff. You get the attack speed buff. Nico is more of a frontliner. And now... Oh, but you're one off of four Arcanists, huh? So it's not, it's not Porcelain. It's another Arcanist somehow? It's not him, and it is one more Arcanist. Well, you're not really getting anything super that we're super happy about here, are we? Baited, kind of whatever. So, ghostly, kind of whatever. Arcanist Alawi, kind of cool, frontliner, technically. Obviously, yeah, Lissandra Cap on this board is cracked, dude. Because you get Porcelain, 4 Arcanist. Zoe Reroll. So if you hit a Lissandra early, this is definitely possible. But you need Lissandra for this comp to really start to come through. And I feel like Zoe is kind of a cool unit. Extra bounces, extra kills. But I think the other units, the Kogma, the... Kogma, the uh, bard, and the other girl, the kindred, will be more likely to be units that I'll go for re-rolling first. Until I find that, that super early uh, Lissandra, in which case we're just going all in on that. Heavenly will be fun to figure out how you can tech that in. Once you figure out how to tech in Heavenly later, that'd be sick. But anyways, that's all I'll go over for now. Later on, maybe we'll uh, talk about some more potential reroll comps that I'll be playing once I get access to this new set. Peace out.